The tenth topic. A flower of Emirda. An extremely powerful reply to objections raised against repetition in the Quran. My dear loyal brothers, due to my wretched situation, this topic is confused and graceless, but I was certain that beneath the confused wording was a most valuable sort of miraculousness, though unfortunately I was incapable of expressing it. But, however, now the wording, since it concerns the Quran, it is both worship in the form of reflection and the shell of a sacred, elevated, shining jewel. The diamonds in the hand should be looked at, not its turned cloths. Also, I wrote it in one or two days during Ramadan while extremely ill, wretched, and without food, of necessity very concisely and briefly, and including many truths and numerous proofs in a single sentence. Its deficiencies, then, should be overlooked. Note, as the tenth topic of the fruits of the little prison, it's a small, shining flower of Emirda and of this month of Ramadan. By explaining one instance of wisdom in the repetitions in the Quran, it dispels the poisonous, putrid illusions of the people of misguidance. My true, loyal brothers, while reading the Quran of Miraculous Exposition in Ramadan, whichever of the 33 verses I came to that in the first ray described the allusions to the Risale Nur, I saw that the page and stir of the verse also look to the Risale Nur and its students to some extent, insofar as they have a share in the story. Particularly the light verses in Surah Al Nur, just as they point to the Risale Nur with ten fingers, so, the darkness verses following it point directly at those opposing it, this affords a further shame. Quite simply, I understood that this station rises from particularity to universality and that one part of that universality is the Risale Nur and its students. Indeed, in regard to the breath, exaltedness and comprehensiveness that the Qur'an's address receives from firstly the extensive station of the universal domunculity of the pre-eternal speaker and from the extensive station of the one addressed in the name of mankind, indeed of all beings and the most extensive station of all mankind's guidance in all the centuries and from the station of the most elevated comprehensive expositions of the divine laws concerning the regulation of this world and the hereafter and the heavens, and the earth, and pre-eternity, and post-eternity, and the dominicality of the creature of the universe, and of all beings, this address displays such an elevated miraculousness and comprehensiveness that both its apparent and simple level, which flatters the simple minds of ordinary people, the most numerous group the Quran addresses, and its highest level, partake of it. Addressing every age and every class of people in its stories and historical narratives, it does not recount one part or one lesson from them, but points out elements of a universal principle as though it were newly revealed. Particularly, its often repeated threats of the wrongdoers, the wrongdoers, and its severe expositions of calamities visited on the heavens and the earth, the punishments for their wrongdoing. With this, and the retribution visited on the Ath and Samut peoples and on Pharaoh, it draws attention to the unequaled wrongs of this century, and with the salvation of prophets like Abraham, peace be upon him, and Moses, peace be upon him, gives consolation to the oppressed believers. Indeed, all past time and the departed ages and centuries, which in the view of heedlessness, and misguidance form a fearsome place of non-existence and a grievous, ruined graveyard the Quran of Miraculous Exposition shows to every century and class of people in the form of living instructive pages, strange worlds, living and endowed with spirits and existent realms of the sustainer which are connected with us. With an elevated miraculousness, it sometimes conveys us to those times and sometimes brings those times to us. Infusing with life the universe, which in the view of misguidance is lifeless, wretched, dead, and a limitless wasteland revolving amid separation and disease 
with the same miraculousness, the same Quran of mighty stature raises to life those dead beings, makes them converse with each other as officials charged with duties and hasten to the assistance of one another. It instructs mankind, the jinn and the angels in true, luminous and pleasurable wisdom. For sure, then, it acquires sacred distinctions like there being ten merits in each of its letters and sometimes a hundred, a thousand, or thousands of merits, and if all men and jinn were together together, they are being unable to produce the like of it, and it's speaking completely appropriately with all mankind and all beings, and it's all the time being inscribed with eagerness in the hearts of millions of hafazas, and it's not causing weariness through its frequent and numerous repetitions, and despite its many obscure passages and sentences, it's being settled perfectly in the delicate and simple heads of children, and it's being agreeable like zamzam water in the ears of the sick, the dying, and those distressed by a few words, and it's gaining for its students happiness in this world and the next. Its smoothness of style, which, observing exactly its interpreters being unlettered, allows for no bombast, artificiality, or effectiveness, and is descending directly from the heavens demonstrate a fine miraculousness. So too, it shows a fine miraculousness in the grace and guidance of flattering the simple minds of ordinary people, the most numerous of the classes of men, through the condescension in its expression, and mostly opening the clearest and most evident pages, like the heavens and earth, and teaching the wondrous miracles of power and meaningful lines of wisdom beneath those commonplace things. By making known that it is also a book of prayer and summons of invocation and divine unity, all of which require repetition, it demonstrates a sort of miraculousness by making understood in a single sentence and a single story through its agreeable repetitions numerous different meanings to numerous different classes of people. Similarly, by making known that minor and unimportant things in ordinary, commonplace events are within its compassionate view and the sphere of its will and regulation, it demonstrates a sort of miraculousness. For it attaches importance to even minor events involving the companions of the Prophet when Islam was being established and the Sharia codified and those events being universal principles and general and they are producing most important fruits, as though they were seeds. With regard to repetition being necessary due to the repetition of need, the repetition of certain verses which, as answers to numerous questions repeated over a period of 20 years, instructs numerous different levels of people is not a fault. Indeed, to repeat certain sentences so powerful, they produce thousands of results, and a number of verses resulting from countless evidences which describe an infinite, awesome, all-embracing revolution that, by destroying utterly the vast universe and changing its shape at doomsday, will remove the world and found the mighty hereafter in its place and will prove that all particulars and universals, from atoms to the stars, are in the hands and under the disposal of a single being and will show the divine wrath and dominical anger on account of the results of the universe's creation at mankind's wrongdoing, which brings to anger the earth and the heavens and the elements, to repeat such verses is not a fault, but most powerful miraculousness and most elevated eloquence, an eloquence and lucid style corresponding exactly to the requirements of the subject. For example, as is explained in the 14th flash of the Risale Nur, the sentence, in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, which constitutes a single verse and is repeated 114 times in the Quran, is a truth which binds the divine throne and the earth and illuminates the cosmos, and for which everyone is in need all the time. If it were repeated millions of times, there would still be need for it. There is need and longing for it not only every day like bread, but every moment like air and light. And for example, the verse, And verily, your sustainer is exalted in might, most compassionate. 
which is repeated eight times in Surah Ta Sin Mim, repeating on account of the result of the universe's creation and in the name of universal domicility, the salvation of the prophets whose stories are told in the Surah and the punishments of their peoples, in order to teach that that dominical dignity requires the terms of those wrongdoing peoples, while divine compassion requires the prophet's salvation, is a concise, miraculous, and elevated miraculousness for which, if repeated thousands of times, there would still be need and longing. And for example, the verse, Then, which of the favors of your sustainer will you deny? Which is repeated in Surah Ar-Rahman, and the verse, Wu, that they, to the rejecters of truth, in Surah Al-Mursalat, shout out threateningly to mankind and the jinn across the centuries and the heavens and the earth, the unbelief, ingratitude, and wrongdoing of those who bring the universe and the heavens and earth to anger, spoil the results of the world's creation, and deny and respond slightingly to the majesty of divine rule and violate the rights of all creatures. If a general lesson thus concerned with thousands of truths and of the strength of thousands of matters were repeated thousands of times, there would still be need for it and its awe-inspiring conciseness and beautiful, miraculous eloquence. And for example, the repetition of the phrase, Glory be unto you, there is no God but you, mercy, mercy, save us, deliver us, preserve us from hellfire. In the supplication of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, called al Jabshan al-Kabir, which is a true and authentic supplication of the Qur'an and a sort of summary proceeding from it. It contains the greatest truth and the most important of the three sovereign duties of creatures in the face of dominicality, the glorification and praise of God and declaring him to be all holy and the most awesome question facing man is being saved from eternal misery and worship the most necessary result of human impotence. So, if it is repeated thousands of times, it is still few. Thus, repetition in the Quran looks to principles like this. Sometimes, on one page, even with regard to the requirements of the position and the need for explanation and the demands of eloquence, it expresses the truth of divine unity perhaps twenty times, explicitly and by implication. It does not cause burden, but affords it a power and eagerness. It has been explained in the Risale Nur with proofs how appropriate, fitting and acceptable in the eyes of rhetoric are the repetitions in the Quran. The wisdom and meaning of the Meccan and Medinan surahs in the Quran of miraculous exposition being different in regard to eloquence, miraculousness, and detail, and brevity is as follows. In Mecca, the first line of those it was addressing and those opposed to it were the idolaters of the Quraysh and untouched tribesmen, so a powerful and elevated rhetorical style was necessary and a miraculous, convincing, and persuasive conciseness. And to establish it, repetition was required. Thus, in most of the Meccan surahs, repeating and expressing the pillars of belief and degrees in the affirmation of divine unity with a most powerful, elevated, and miraculous conciseness, it proved so powerfully the first creation and the resurrection, God, and the hereafter, not only in a single page, verse, sentence, or word, but sometimes in a letter through grammatical devices like altering the positions of the words or sentences, making a word indefinite and omissions and inclusions that the geniuses and authorities of the science of rhetoric met it with wonder. The Risalinur and the 25th word and its addenda in particular, which prove in summary for the aspects of the Quran's miraculousness and the Quranic commentary Isharat al-Ijaz from the Arabic Risalinur which in wondrous fashion proves the aspects of the Qur'an's miraculousness in its word order, have demonstrated in fact that the Meccan surahs and verses contain the highest styles of eloquence and the most elevated, concise miraculousness. As for the Medinan surahs and verses, since 
the front line of those they were addressing and who opposed them were the people of the book, the Jews and Christians who affirmed God's existence. What was required by eloquence and guidance and for the discussion to correspond to the situation was not explanation of the high principles of religion and pillars of belief in a simple, clear and detailed style, but the explanation of particular matters in the Sharia and its injunctions which were the cause of dispute and the origins and causes of secondary matters and general laws. Thus, in the Medinan surahs and verses, through explanations in a detailed, clear, simple style, in the matchless manner of exposition peculiar to the Qur'an, it mostly mentions within those particular secondary matters a powerful and elevated summary, a conclusion and proof, a sentence related to divine unity, belief, or the hereafter which makes the particular matter of the Sharia universal and ensures that it confirms the belief in God. It illuminates the passage and elevates it. The Risaliner has proud the qualities and fine points and elevated eloquence in the summaries and conclusions which express divine unity and the hereafter and come mostly at the end of verses like Indeed, God is powerful over all things. Verily, God has knowledge of all things and He is the mighty, the wise and He is exalted in might, most compassionate. It explains in the second beam of the second light of the 25th word 10 out of the many fine points of those summaries and conclusions and proves to the obstinate that they contain a sovereign miracle. Yes, in expounding those secondary matters of the Sharia and laws of social life, the Quran at once raises the views of those it addresses to elevated, universal points and transforming a simple style into an elevated one and instruction in the Sharia to instruction in divine unity, it shows it is both a book of law and commands and wisdom and a book of the tenets of faith and belief and of invocation and reflection and summons. And by teaching many of the aims of Quranic guidance in every passage, it displays a brilliant and miraculous eloquence different to that of the Meccan surahs. Sometimes in two words, for example, in sustainer of all the worlds and your sustainer through the phrase your sustainer it expresses divine oneness and through sustainer of all the worlds divine unity it expresses the divine oneness within divine unity in a single sentence even it sees and states a particle in the people of an eye and with the same words the same hammer it states the sun in the sky making it an eye to the sky. For example, after the verse, who created the heavens and the earth, following the verse, he emerges the night into the day, and he emerges the day into the night. It says, and he has full knowledge of all that is in man's hearts. It says, while creating the vast majestic earth and skies, he knows and regulates the sentiments of the heart. With an exposition of this sort, it transforms that simple, unlettered level and particular discussion which takes into account the minds of ordinary people into an elevated, attractive and general conversation for the purpose of guidance. A question. Sometimes an important truth is not apparent to a superficial view and in some positions the connection is not known when a concise phrase expounding divine unity or a universal principle is drawn out from a minor, ordinary matter and it is imagined to be a fault. For example, to mention the extremely elevated principle and all all endued with knowledge, one knowing. When Joseph, peace be upon him, seized his brother through a subterfuge, does not appear to be in keeping with eloquence. What is its meaning and purpose? The answer. In most of the long and middle length surahs, each of which is a small Qur'an, and in many pages and passages, not only two or three aims are followed, for by its nature the Qur'an comprises many books and teachings, such as being a book of invocation, 
belief and reflection and a book of law, wisdom and guidance. Thus, since it describes the majestic manifestations of divine dominicality and its encompassing all things, as a sort of recitation of the mighty book of the universe, it follows many aims in every discussion and sometimes on a single page. While instructing in knowledge of God, the degrees in divine unity and the truths of belief, with an apparently weak connection it opens another subject of instruction in the following passage, joining powerful connections to the weak one. It corresponds perfectly to the discussion and raises the level of eloquence. A second question. What is the wisdom in and purpose of the Quran proving and drawing attention to the hereafter, divine unity, and man's rewards and punishments thousands of times, explicitly, implicitly, and elusively, and teaching them in every surah, on every page, and in every discussion? The answer. It would not be excessive if the Quran were to draw attention to them thousands or even millions of time, for it does so in order to teach men concerning the most momentous matters in the sphere of contingency and the revolutions in the universe's history and the most important, most significant, most awesome matters related to his duties, which, since he has undertaken the sovereign trust and was greency of the earth, will lead to either his perdition or everlasting happiness, and in order to remove his countless doubts, and to smash his violent denials and obduracy, indeed, to make men affirm those awesome revolutions and submit to those most necessary essential matters which are as great as the revolutions. Indeed, those discussions in the Quran are read millions of times and they do not cause burden, nor does the need cease. For example, since the verse for those who believe and do righteous deeds are gardens beneath which rivers flow, they will dwell there forever. Announces the good news of eternal happiness and saves from the eternal extinction of death, which every moment shows itself to wretched man, both himself and his world and all those he loves, and gains for them an everlasting sovereignty if it were repeated thousands of millions of times and given the importance of the universe it still would not be excessive nor lose its value. Thus, in teaching innumerable, invaluable matters of this sort and endeavoring to persuade, convince, and prove the occurrence of the awesome revolutions that will destroy the present form of the universe and transform it as though it were a house, the Quran of Miraculous Exposition certainly draws attention to those matters thousands of times explicitly, implicitly, and elusively, and this is not excessive, but renews the bounty which is like an essential need, the same as the essential needs of bread, medicine, air, and light are renewed. And for example, as is proved decisively in the Risale Nur, the wisdom in the Quran repeating severely, angrily, and forcefully threatening verses like, for wrongdoers there is a grievous penalty. but. For those who reject God, for them will be the fire of hell. Is that man's unbelief is such a transgression against the rights of the universe and most creatures that it makes the heavens and earth furious and brings the elements to anger so that they deal blows on those wrongdoers with tempest and storm? According to the clear statements of the verses, and when they are cast therein, they will hear the terrible drawing in of its breath as it blazes forth, almost bursting with fury. Hell so rages at those iniquitous deniers that it almost disintegrates with fury. Thus, through the wisdom of shopping, not from the point of view of man's smallness and insignificance before such a general crime and boundless aggression, but the importance of the rights of the monarch of universe's subjects before the seriousness of the wrongful crime and the awesomeness of the unjust aggression and the boundless ugliness in the unbelief and iniquity of those deniers, in accordance with the wisdom of showing this, if repeating in his decree most wrathfully and severely the crime and its punishment, thousands, millions, 
or even thousands of millions of times, it still would not be excessive and a fault because for a thousand years, thousands of millions of people have read such verses every day with total eagerness and need never becoming bored. Indeed, every day, all the time, for everyone, one world disappears and the door of a new world is opened. Through repeating, there is no God but God, a thousand times out of need and with longing in order to illuminate each of those transitory worlds, it makes it a lamp for each of those changing veils. In the same way, the Quran repeats them in truly meaningful fashion and in accordance with the wisdom of appreciating by reading it, the penalties of those crimes and the severe threats of the pro-eternal monarch which smash their obduracy and of working to be saved from the rebellion of the soul so as not to obscure in darkness those multiple fleeting veils and renewed traveling universes and not to make ugly their images which are reflected in the mirrors of their lives and not to turn against them those guest views which may testify in favor of them. Even a Satan would shudder at imagining to be out of place these powerful, severe, and repeated threats of the Quran. It shows that the terms of hell are pure justice for the deniers who do not heed them. And for example, by repeating many times the stories of Moses, peace be upon him, which contain many instances of wisdom and benefits, like the story of his staff and of the other prophets, peace be upon them, it demonstrates that the prophethoods of all the other prophets are a proof of the veracity of the messengership of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and that one who does not deny all of them cannot in truth deny his messengership. For this purpose, and since everyone does not always have the time or capability to read the whole Quran, it repeats those stories as it does the main players of belief so as to make all the long and middle-length surahs each like a small Qur'an. To repeat them, then, is not excessive, it is required by eloquence and teaches that the question of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is the greatest question of mankind and the most crucial matter of the universe. It has been demonstrated decisively in the Risale Nur with many proofs and indications that by giving the highest position to the person of Muhammad in the Quran and including him in four pillars of belief and holding Muhammad is the messenger of God equal to the pillar of there is no God but God shows that the messengership of Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him is the greatest truth in the universe and the person of Muhammad is the most noble of creatures and his universal collective personality and circuit track, known as the Muhammadan reality, is the most radiant sun of the two worlds. His worthiness for this extraordinary position has also been proud. One of these proofs is this. According to the principle of the cause is like the doer, since the equivalent of all the good works performed by all his community at all times enters his book of good works, and the light which he brought illuminates all the truths of the cosmos, and he makes grateful not only the jinn, mankind, and animate beings, but also the universe, and the heavens, and earth, and since the supplications of plants offered through the tongue of disposition, and the supplications of animals offered through the tongue of their innate need, and the righteous of his peace and blessings be upon him, community every day, bequeath, to him their benedictions and supplications for mercy and spiritual gains, whose millions, and together with spirit beings, even millions of millions of unrejectable supplications are accepted as we actually witness with our eyes. And since each of the 300,000 letters of the Quran yield from a hundred to a thousand merits, only with regard to the recitation of the Quran by all his community, Infinite numbers of lights enter the book of his deeds, the one all-knowing of the unseen soul, and knew that the Muhammadan, peace and blessings be upon him, reality, which is his collective personality, would in the future be like a tuba tree of paradise, and in accordance with that rank, accorded him supreme importance in the Quran, 
and in his decree showed the following of him and receiving of his intercession through adhering to his illustrious sunnah to be one of the most important matters concerning man. And from time to time he took into consideration his human personality and human state in his early life which was a seat of the majestic Tuba tree. Thus, since the truths repeated in the Quran hold such value, all sound natures will testify that its repetitions represent a powerful and extensive miracle. Unless, that is to say, a person is afflicted with some sickness of the heart and malady of the conscience due to the plague of materialism and is included under the rule, a man denied the light of the sun due to his diseased eye, his mouth denied the test of water due to sickness.